Hi everyone, welcome back. This is our second lesson on drawing straight line graphs. Um, the plan for today is that we are able to um, draw straight line graphs without using the table of values. And to do that, we need to learn about what the gradient is and what the y-intercept is. And hopefully those two things uh, ring a bell from last year. So let's get started. Um, here we've got three examples and I'm gonna use these three examples to talk about the gradient first of all. Um, now. If you've got the equation, like here, the gradient is really easy because it's just the number in front of the x. It does not include the x, just the number in front. So if you're asked for the gradient on a question like that, then it really is easy. Just read it off. So the gradient of that first one is 3. The gradient of the second one is 2. And the gradient of the third one is minus 2, negative 2. So let's have a think about what that means on the actual graph. So we've got three different graphs here. So why has that one got a gradient of three? And what has that done to the graph? So if I just choose a couple of points that the graph obviously goes through and draw a little triangle, hopefully you'll see the difference between a gradient of three on that one and a gradient of two on that one. So on this one, for every one you go across, you go up by three. For this one, for every one you go across, you go up by two. So this one's not as steep. This one's steeper than this one. It actually shouldn't matter where you take your measurements from. If you go further down, then you'll notice that it's still going to have a gradient of two, no matter where you are on the line. One across, two up, a gradient of two. It also doesn't matter if you wanted to use a bigger triangle. So on this one, if you wanted to use this triangle here, it would also give you a gradient of two. And that's because, sorry, a gradient of three. That's because you go two across. And one, two, three, four, five, six up. So you can see that that's still a gradient of three because six divided by two is three. So for every one that you go across, you're going up by three. And over here, for every one that you're going across, you go up by two. This one here, for every one that you go across, you go down by two, which is why it is negative two. And you're going to need to remember that if the graph points downwards, so if the, point, if the graph points in this direction, then it's going to have a negative gradient. And if the graph points in this direction, it's got a positive gradient. So what I'd like you to do next is write down a little formula for me, which is that one. You'll see that all over the place in lots of textbooks and in lots of other videos that says the gradient is equal to the rise divided by the run. Let me explain what that means. So here we've got some examples and I want to try and find out what the gradient is of each of these lines. We don't have the equation, so we can't read off the gradient like we could earlier so we've got to work it out from the line so let's do the first one what you're going to do is just choose a couple of points that it clearly goes through and then you're going to draw your right angle triangle and you're going to count the rise which is this bit one two three and the run which is this bit one two three and then we're going to use that formula it's the rise divided by run so that's three divided by three so we've got a gradient of one so that line has a gradient of one let's do the same thing on here let's choose a couple of points that it obviously goes through and we've got two and one two three four five six so six divided by two that has a gradient of three which means that for every one that goes across it's going to go up by three which you can clearly see that it does I'm just going to choose positive ones first. So let's have a go at this one next. Choose a couple of points that it goes through. And then that's one and two. So two divided by one, rise divided by run is two. There's a gradient of two. Might not have needed to do that calculation two divided by one because it might have been obvious because I chose a slightly smaller triangle. And then there's one other positive one, which is this one down here. So let's choose a couple of points that it goes through. 
and we've got two and eight. So eight divided by two is four. Okay, so there's all the positive ones done, and now I've got some negative ones to look at as well. So here's my first negative one. I know the answer is going to be negative. Okay, so the run is two and the rise is four, but it's pointing down. Four over two, four divided by two is two. I need to include a minus sign on that because that is pointing down. So the gradient of that line is minus 2. This one up here, there's only a couple of points that I could use. That is 4 and 1. So 4 divided by 1 is 4, but it's pointing down. So it needs a minus sign on it. And then the last one I'm going to do this one in the bottom corner here. Choose a couple of points that it goes through and I've got a three and a three. I know it's pointing down so that's negative one. So you can see that I've worked out the gradient of most of the lines on there. Positive ones, this is gradient of one, this is steeper, it's got a gradient of three, this is a gradient of two, not quite as steep as that one. And then the steepest one by far is this one down here, which is a gradient of four. And then the negative ones are the ones that are pointing down. And three different ones there. I didn't bother doing that one because it's actually exactly the same, exactly the same as that one. Okay, so if you want to try the exercise on that, it should take you five or ten minutes. Don't spend any more time than that on it. And pause the video, come back, and we'll do the next section. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've paused the video, you've had a go at the exercise and you've marked it. We need to now look at the other part of the equation. So we've done the gradient and now we need to do the y-intercept. And actually the y-intercept is a bit easier. So we've got this part of the equation to look at now. So in the first case, the y-intercept is plus one. In the second one, the y-intercept is minus two. And this is also plus one. So what does that mean on the graph? It's not to do with how steep it is, it's to do with where it is on the graph. So this one, this one, and this one. That is the y-intercept. This has a plus one on the end of the equation, which means the graph goes through the y-axis at plus one. This has a minus two on the end of the equation, which means it goes through the y-axis at minus two. And then this one also has a plus one on the end, so it goes through at plus one. So the y-intercept is the place where the graph crosses the y-axis. It's actually much, much, much simpler than a gradient. So you're gonna have a go at that. And you're gonna look at the equation and you're gonna look to see what the number is on the end. So again, pause the video, nice short activity, just two or three minutes, trying to identify the y-intercept from the equation. All right, welcome back. The third section is a little bit more difficult. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we might need to rearrange some of the equations. All right, because sometimes they're not in the right format. The format we are looking for is this. We want them to look like that. We want the y to be on the left, and we want the x and the number to be on the right, and we want the x bit to be first, and then the number bit to be second. And you might recognize y equals mx plus c because math teachers talk about that all the time. So we want the equation to look like that. Once the equation looks like this, we can really quickly read off the gradient, which is m, and the y-intercept. But we can only do that once the equation's in the right format. And you'll see I've got three examples where it's not in the correct format for me to be able to read that off. Can you see I've got y equals, but the x bit and the number bit are the wrong way around. So that needs fixing. Here, I've got the x and the y on one side, it's no good. And this one, I've got the y and a five on one side and the x on the other. 
So we need to rearrange each of those. And then once we've rearranged them, we can identify the gradient and the y-intercept. And then we can go ahead and draw the graph because that's what we're trying to do at the end of the day. So what do I need to do to this one? Well, this first one is actually the simplest one. I just need to swap over these two terms. I'm going to put the minus 2x first, bearing in mind that that subtract sign belongs to this. So I've left it there. And then I'm going to put a plus 3. So this right-hand side here is exactly the same as this right-hand side here. So we've got minus 2x plus 3 rather than 3 subtract 2x. Now it's in the right format for me to read off. The gradient is equal to minus 2. And the y-intercept is equal to 3. And I could draw that one quite quickly now that I've rearranged it. Second one, I'm going to have to do a little bit more work on that one. I need to treat that like an equation or like rearranging a formula. Do the same thing to both sides. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. So I've done that so that it's only the y on the left hand side, but it's still not quite right. So I need to use that, do that other trick again. And now it's in the right format. So what's the gradient and what's the y-intercept? Well, the gradient is equal to negative 1. There's actually a little 1 in there that we don't write. So it's minus 1x. So the gradient is minus 1. And the y-intercept is equal to 7. So I've identified the gradient and the intercept now that this is the right way around. And if you look at the original thing, it was not obvious, was it? what the gradient or the intercept was. Okay, last one. This one's quite a lot more difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of that. And then I'm actually just going to swap over the sides so that the stuff that was on the right is now on the left so that it looks more normal. So I've swapped the sides. Now it looks like it should do. So gradient is equal to 3, and the y-intercept is equal to minus 5. I could go ahead and draw those quite happily now. So again, pause the video now. Five minutes, and maybe more like 10 minutes to do this exercise. Um, it's quite a, quite a lot harder than any other things we've done today, so you don't have to do every single one. Just try the ones that are easy for you, um, and then... Once you've had a go at them, mark them as one last section of the video. Okay. Okay, so welcome back. This is our last section of the video now. And you might recognize this because this is one of the examples that we did last lesson. Same equation, but you'll notice that I no longer have a table of values on the page. And that's because I'm going to try and draw this without the table of values, just using the gradient and the intercept. This is actually back to a nice easy one because everything's in the right order. I've got my gradient and my intercept. So I'm just going to write that out first. Gradient is equal to 2 and the intercept is also equal to 2. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I can go ahead and draw it. I'm going to start by using the y-intercept fact. So I'm going to start by using this fact. So the y-intercept of 2 means that it goes through the y-axis at 2. So I know for sure that that is one point on the graph. That's my y-intercept. Now I'm going to, so I've used the, I've used the y-intercept. Now I'm going to use the gradient. So gradient of 2 means that for every 1 that you go across, go up by 2. For every 1 that you go across, you go up by 2. And by using that gradient and by stepping up 1 across two up, one across two up, you can see where that line needs to go. So what I'm going to do now is grab a ruler, make sure I continue the pattern of one across and two up. And I can draw my straight line, and that line is y equals 2x plus 2. I think that is a lot quicker than using the table of values, and the answer should be exactly the same as what we did last lesson. I'm just trying to see if I can find a piece of paper from last lesson. Um, 
so I can show you that this is what we did last lesson. So the same equation with a table of values. You can see the line we got is exactly the same as the line we've got now, but it's a lot quicker. You don't need to do any substitution. You don't need to fill in, fill in the table. We can go for it straight away. I also want to talk about the two special cases that we did last lesson and how we might be able to do those now without the table of values. So y is equal to x. The gradient of that is equal to 1 and the y-intercept is equal to 0 because there's nothing plus, plus nothing there. So it goes through the y-axis at 0. For every 1 that goes across, it goes up by 1 because it's got a gradient of 1. So this is my y equals x line. Uh, y equals minus x has a gradient of minus 1 and an intercept of 0. So again, it goes through the y-axis at 0. So this time it's got a negative gradient. So for everyone it goes across, it goes down by 1. Just trying to make sure that's lined up properly. And there's my line. So again, we can do that without a table of values. Let's do a few more difficult ones. So let's do y equals um, 3x minus 4. So again, we're going to start by identifying the gradient and the intercept. The intercept is minus 4 and the gradient is 3. We're going to use the intercept first. So the y-intercept is minus 4. So that means it goes through the y-axis at minus 4. So I've used the y-intercept. Now I need to use the gradient. Gradient of 3 means for every one that you go across, go up by 3. All right, so now I've continued that pattern as far as I can go. So I can draw that straight line there. Let's do another one. So this has a negative gradient and the y-intercept is plus 4. So let's use the y-intercept first. Go through y-axis at plus 4, but this has a negative gradient of 2. So for 1 across, 2 down. 1 across, 2 down. So you can see where this needs to go. For every 1 that you go across, it needs to go 2 down. So let's make sure you follow that pattern as accurately as as we can, spending some time making sure the rules are nicely lined up, and then that's y equals minus 2x plus 4. Let's make the last example a little bit more difficult. Alright, so this is more difficult because it's not in the right format, so we need to rearrange it. So we rearrange it like this. So it's a little bit better now. It's got a y-intercept of 5, it's got a gradient of minus 1. Again, we don't write the little 1 there, but it's minus 1x. So it's got a y-intercept of 5, there's my 5, and it's got a gradient of minus 1. So for every 1 go across, I'm going to go down by 1. And there is my line. Alright, that's it from me for today. So we've hopefully learned how we can draw things like this without having to use a table of values and um, we've made it a lot more difficult as well so that like that for example is quite a tough one where we've had to rearrange it then we've had to identify the gradient and the wind set and finally we've been able to draw it so there's one last activity 10 or 15 minutes don't spend any longer than that on it um, you can stop the video Obviously, if you want to go back and have a look at one of the sections whilst you're doing the exercise, then that would be sensible. All right, bye for now.